Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And yesterday I uploaded a video, got just under 10,000 views, but it had one of the highest single subject comments on a video that I've uploaded in a long time. And it's because of this clip. It was of Jared Bernstein, the chair of the Council of Economic Advisors to the Biden team. And he was unable to answer a question, why do we borrow our own currency? I'll put a link to this page in the description of this video. It's, uh, it's a documentary that you can buy or rent. Uh, they are showing it now in New York, Washington, DC, LA, Portland, Seattle, San Rafael, Oakland, Nantucket, Anchorage, and a few places outside of the United States too, Helsinki and Vienna and soon going to many places throughout uh, Australia, Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney. Yeah, it's quite interesting. And uh, I think I think it's going to be worth a watch. I have not seen it in its entirety, but based on the trailer, wow. Moving right along, you'll find a lot of video of David Schwartz when he took the stage at XRP Las Vegas. In the beginning of his half an hour, he talks about the stable coin. Uh, there's going to be a wide variety of solutions, he says, and the volatility of digital assets is a problem, he cites, where there is some tightly regulated environments. So it's critical to offer other solutions. Now, the stable coin does not have an official name yet, but that will be made public coming at the Apex event in Amsterdam in June. That is the 11th, 12th, and 13th. Ripple has a current focus to bring the DeFi world, decentralized finance, with the TradFi world. So that's the traditional side. Um, at about the 18 minute mark, the discussion moves to the use of AI, specifically AI chat bots. That part was quite interesting. But the main focus moved to a shout out to the builders where he mentions hooks. That's of course on the Zahao network and how it was an example of a great development that came from outside of Ripple. And near the end, he talked about how Ripple wants the ledger to be owned and controlled by the community. And that at the same time, they would love to have any thoughts and suggestions as to what can be built and how to improve the XRP ledger. And again, I must point out that this decentralized ledger that has a native digital asset XRP is for everyone, not just the banks and financial institutions. If you can't make it to Amsterdam in June to see the Apex speakers live, don't worry, you're going to be able to watch everything that they capture in video. You're looking at the top 300 by market cap and everything is a little soft. 2.35 trillion down about 0.41% over yesterday. Fear and greed index is sitting at neutral. The total volume is down. Only 49 billion, that's a 33% decrease. The DeFi volume is 4 billion or 8.8 .8 total of the total market value. Stable coins make up 90.25% of the crypto market volume. So this is why when people ask me, why are you covering Tether? Well, it is because it represents over 90% of the crypto market. The Bitcoin dominance, 53%. In the top 100, we have Airweave up 8.7%, Render up 5%, and everything else is pretty much running sideways or slightly down as Bitcoin is trading at 63,711 at the time of this recording. You can watch the nearly five hours of Warren Buffett presiding over the 2024 Brookshire Hathaway shareholders meeting. This annual event is something I always look forward to. I can't wait to watch it. Yeah, it was a little sad to not have Charlie there, 
but you'll find Berkshire is in a comfortable cash position, 36 billion in cash to be exact, with 153 billion in treasuries. They're only going to swing at pitches they like, he said, and Apple will remain their biggest holding even after reducing. It is sitting at about 13%, but 116 million shares fewer. He took responsibility and said that it was his sole decision, 100%, to sell the entire Paramount stake, and in doing so, they lost quite a bit of money. I always find it pretty incredible that nearly 40,000 people go to this annual event in person. Wow, Genfinity scored a big guest to come onto one of their live spaces. This is Tim Draper. I'm not going to miss this one for sure. There was a great Bitcoin debate with Anthony Scaramucci, Eric Voris, Peter Schiff, and Noriel Rabini. And it was, yeah, was what you would think it would be. Uh, Eric Voris and Peter Schiff have gone at it in the past. I think Eric Voris always comes out ahead. Here's a short clip. First of all, a world in which gold was the money again would be a superior world to the status quo. I'll, I'll grant that. Uh, my primary concern is that the world has money that is derived out of market processes rather than out of coercive centralization of the state. The latter is extremely an un-American and dangerous plague that has existed now since at least 1971 when the dollar became a fiat currency. Anything that moves the world away from centralized control of money to market-based control of money is something that I would be in favor of. Peter, I will praise you if you can get the world to accept gold again as a form of normal money, that would be great. There are some other of us who don't wish to wait around for that, and we actually think a decentralized form of money that you can send in a digital world has value. And back in 2011, 2012, 2013, when we had our first debate, I understand that like the burden of proof was on us. We had to argue that it was a currency or that it was a money. We had to make those statements because no one, there's no one, no reason for anyone to believe us back then. But it's 2024, and this is a $1.2 trillion asset, one of the most liquid assets in the world, one of the top 10 assets in the entire world by market cap. I don't need to keep making the case that Bitcoin is something. The world believes it's something. You can see why if you ever go try to send a transaction internationally with a bank and you do it with Bitcoin on your phone, Anyone who's done those two things will see the value immediately, immediately. And I don't have to like defend it much, right? It's just, it's just growing and it's an option. There's no Bitcoiner that would force either of you to ever use it. And if you want to stay in the traditional financial system, go down with the Titanic, go for it. Many of us are choosing an alternative. This is Anthony Welfare. That would be Anthony with a T. He's a strategic advisor and he's been a part of a lot of work for Ripple when it comes to their CBDCs. He has built a new project on the XRP Ledger, and it's a business that verifies the use cases and gives it a score out of 100, and then it remains verified on the blockchain. They take the information that you submit on their form and their team goes into deeper research on those details. I'm going to let this short clip take you out where Anthony explains his business. And until next time, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye. And I'd like to introduce you today to the CBRC Use Case Register. The CBR Use Case Register is the world's first and only immutable register of blockchain projects. On CBRC Register, you'll be able to find real-world blockchain projects, real use cases whereby people are using blockchain technology to add value to the world. If you have a blockchain project that you're working on and you'd like to submit to the CBRC Register, please have a look at the website and navigate to the submission form, which is down in the link below. On the submission form, you can submit all your details for your blockchain project. This will be then sent to the research team who will have a look at it, 
verify it, and if they're happy, they will publish this on the CBRC register. After it's published on the CBRC register, we will then look to give it a score and then verify it on blockchain. So please have a look at the link below on the CBRC submission.